Toyota, the black sheep of the electric car family, had just had an, a, a media event and we were all excited because of what it was called Evolution. And uh, Tom Malogny, who is going to be here in just a couple of minutes uh, for his segment plugged in with Tom Malogny, as we always do every weekend, is, he went there. He was just as excited as I was. And I'll tell you why we are not excited anymore. Uh, and, you know, I, as, as you know, Toyota is one of the largest companies out there in the world in some Somehow they are just not there with this whole electrification thing. I would say, I would say they're pretty much dead last. And I've made a few videos where, where, where you know, and I don't know why you guys love watching Toyota <laughs> electrification videos, but uh, uh, somehow they just, they just, they have the money, but they're just not behind it. As as you can see, this is a picture of the new Mirai. Um, that's also they continuously pushing, and I don't know why because it's a hydrogen fuel cell car and you know you know how i feel about that anyway listen before i get my blood pressure up uh, all the way up there i'm gonna have a uh, tom here so we can together share this uh, group therapy where we I, i'm 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 just still quite baffled but the there, there is some hope there is some hope they have announced uh, a couple of things, so we're going to tell you about it. Uh, before that, a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by Climate Exchange. They're back with a Tesla raffle, and this time, not only there's a second and third prize, but the first prize, you can pick any Tesla, any model, any configuration uh, that you want, up to $195,000, which pretty much covers everything. Um, and even if you don't win, uh, the money that you spend on the raffle ticket still goes to the good cause as a nonprofit organization going for the carbon-free economy and the world go to the description of this video to get your raffle tickets today makes a great gift as well all right without further ado let me bring in tom and uh you know uh, talk about toyota where they're going and what he saw there at this media event tom welcome back to the show hey alex thanks for having me again all right all right so now you know we were both kind of like all right let's see what they have for us and uh you know there's a there's a there was always a little bit of hope because they have recently made a deal with Panasonic, you know, Panasonic relationship with uh, with uh, Tesla is a little rocky right now. So they, they look for a partner and they got it in uh, Toyota. So that looked kind of like, hey, you know, maybe they're really starting to get serious about it. Uh, but uh, tell us what you saw there. Yeah, so Toyota held what they called their evolution uh, media drive and basically uh, wanted to talk to the media about what they were doing as far as electrification. Uh, they also introduced the 2021 Mirai, which is a fuel cell vehicle, but it is an electric vehicle. I know a lot of EV enthusiasts don't really want to look at it that way, but it is an electric vehicle, uh, even though it requires hydrogen to fuel the electric motor. So uh, that was kind of their big uh, show here. Uh, the 2021 Mirai actually looks much better than the existing generation Mariah. I gotta opinion. tell you, man, I am in love with this car. What an amazing design. If it wasn't for the crappy technology they put in there, like, I love this car. The design. So it, it really looks like a Lexus. And a lot of the people that I was there with actually said the same thing. And we all wondered, like, why wouldn't Tesla, uh, Toyota just brand this a uh, Lexus rather than put it under the Toyota family? Because inside, it's a premium, beautiful interior. The ex exterior looks great. has a lot of Lexus cues. So I almost think that the Mirai would have fit better under the Lexus nameplate. But in any event, it's Toyota Mirai. It's coming in 2021. Uh, looks a lot better. Uh, and, uh, you know, you're still probably by 2021 going to have a lot of problems trying to find a place to refuel it. Uh, in California right now, I think there's 38 hydrogen fueling stations at, it, at any given time. As many as half of them might not be working or might just yeah, out of fuel. Yeah, or out of fuel. Uh, let me get your opinion on this. I have yeah. a few friends that have either the Mirai or the Honda Clarity. And, uh, you know, some of them have a lot of problems. Others say, no, I, you know, I figure out a way to get it. Some people drive really early in the morning before the station after it's been refueled and before rush hour and when people go and fill up. Uh, but it's kind of a hassle. And if you live outside of California, forget it. Uh, there's a couple hydrogen refueling stations in the rest of the country. So it really, at this point, is just for California. And it still is kind of inconvenient getting the fuel. And Toyota has to give you 
$15,000 worth of fueling credits, or it would just be ridiculously expensive. It costs somewhere around $125, I think, to fully refuel a Mirai now, and that only gets you like 300 miles. So it costs way more than gas, way, way, way more than electric. Um, but you do get that included in your lease with Toyota or Honda. So, um, you know, the fuel we should also mention cost. we should also mention that you can only re refuel the hydrogen fuel cell uh, cars at the stations. You can't do it at home like with an electric car, which to me is a deal breaker as far as moving forward. Yeah. So I think a lot of your your followers will understand that and appreciate that. That goes without saying you're kind of following the same refueling model as gasoline where you have to drive somewhere and you know st wait there for a couple minutes and refuel i mean the refueling comes fast it's five minutes kind of so very similar to gas that's if there's hydrogen there and if you can find a station that's open near you so the the, the infrastructure is still a huge problem with hydrogen but as far as the car itself uh the car works <laughs> the the mirai you know and the clarity and the, uh, the hyundai nexo uh they're great they're, they all work just fine if you can get fuel they're not as quick, not as responsive as uh, electric cars or plug-in electric cars are. They, they don't have as much power. I think the new Mirai has 147 horsepower, I think, or 150. So, you know, a car that weighs over 4,000 pounds with uh, about 150 horsepower, uh, much less than what you normally find in, a, in, a, in, in an electric car. They're a lot slower than regular electric cars. They don't have that instant torque. Uh, but, you know, not everybody needs that. So I, I think if if hydrogen fueling stations were plentiful and if hydrogen didn't cost, you know, five times as much as electricity, then there would be people out there that were interested in these cars. But it's a tough sell today. But Toyota's banking on the long run. Uh, they, they're kind of putting a lot of their eggs in the hydrogen basket. Uh, they still, you know, don't sell a fully electric car. They have the Prius Prime, which is a, a pretty darn good plug-in hybrid. Uh, it's one of the, it is the top selling plug-in hybrid in the U.S. And now the other big uh, news, as far as I'm concerned, and why I went to this press drive, was that the RAV4 is going to get a plug-in hybrid version, uh, which is probably uh, the biggest news out of that, uh, the, the whole uh, uh, press event for me, the so it's not Toyota's first go around with plug-ins and RAV4s. It's actually the third generation. Back in 1997 to 2003, I think it was, they made and sold or leased a little under 1,500. I think it was 1,484 RAV4 EVs, uh, total Fully electric. electric. All electric, right? There's still a few of them out there on the road. And Those correct me if I'm wrong, Tom. Uh, was was wasn't that a still a deal between Toyota and uh, uh, and and Tesla where they use their batteries and drivetrain? Uh, or am I confusing? The You're two? confusing. Okay. So I, somehow Tesla, I Tesla hadn't even been around then. We're talking 1997 to 2003. First okay. I guess I was just dreaming. Well, you weren't dreaming. Let's go to second generation okay. for EV now. Fast forward to 2012 through 2014, and Toyota made 2,600 fully electric RAV4s that used a Tesla powertrain. So that's what uh, you were thinking about. That's I was what I was on thinking the first about. generation before. So now in 2020, we're going we're going to get uh, the the a, a plug-in hybrid version of the RAV4, and uh, that's going to be round three for plug-in cars with. Uh, RAV4 and Toyota. Uh, unfortunately, they're going backwards a little bit because the last I was two say. were full electric and the third generation is a plug-in hybrid. Normally, it works the other way around where automakers might start off making a plug-in ver hybrid version and then eventually they're going to transition to full electric. But it's going the other way. So do we know what no the set. range is going to I'll be? Take it. Unfortunately, we don't have any details. We only have, de the only details are it's going to be the most powerful RAV4 in the lineup. And I think we all would have probably figured that out because it has a gas engine and now they're gonna be adding an electric motor. So combine that, you're gonna get a more powerful vehicle. So that really was no surprise, but they're telling us it's a most powerful RAV4 in the lineup and that it comes in a special red color that the other RAV4s won't be available in. So that's all we got. Um, the car, it's coming. 
It has a special color. It's all wheel drive. It's most powerful, a uh, RAV4. The rest of the details are gonna be um, told to us at the LA Auto Show coming up next month. Not too, not too long to wait. We only have to wait about five or six weeks. We're gonna get all those details. I know you're gonna be there, I'm gonna be there. And I'm imagining that we're probably gonna do a video right in front of the RAV4 and talk about it in a month and a half. Yeah, well, I, 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 we need to know the range. So to me, the only way this was work, I'm not, I, I have a plug-in hybrid myself, so I actually, I don't, I don't mind them at all. It's, it kind of solves my problem of not having to wait at all to recharge, you know, superchargers, Electrify Miracle, whatever. I don't have to worry about it. Uh, so if the range of the new RAV4 plug-in hybrid would be the same or more of the previous one plus the, the, the gas extender, I would be perfectly fine with that. But I, some, something tells me that may not be the case. So let me just ask you, what would be the range that you would be happy with, uh, the electric range for, for, for this version? And at what point in terms of how low would they have to get there to, to, to definitely disappoint you? Right. So, well, it's not going to have the range that the previous generation all electric range. That was over hundred miles. So we're, you know, we're, we're, we're definitely not talking about a hundred miles and then a gas engine kicks on. Now you're talking about uh, an EREV like the Volt or the BMW i3 I with a range extender. It's not a range extender. It's the regular Toyota motor that goes in, you know, all the RAV4s with the addition of an electric motor. So it's not going to have nearly the same size battery as uh, an EREV, EREV would. That said, it's a, it's a big, vehicle so they can probably stuff a decent sized battery in there i'm guessing that they're going to probably shoot for somewhere around what the prius prime has currently which is like around 25 miles of range that's the minimum that i'm going to say that i'd kind of accept without being disappointed i would really love if it got somewhere around 35 40 miles of range i know it's not going to be much more than that i just don't think packaging wise they could fit a battery in that size um, but, you know, I think we're going to look at some something somewhere between 20, 25 miles and 35, 40 miles. And wow. if, if, if they if they push it over 25 miles, I think that it's going to be very well received. I think you're going to see a lot of these sold. People want a plug in all wheel drive, small SUV. The, the, the RAV4 is the number one selling, you know, small SUV in the country. Put a plug on it. It's only going to make it better as long as the price isn't crazy. Uh, you know, you're not going to get a, a you know 100 mile EV out of it. Not this generation, Alex. But I think people are going to embrace it if it's got somewhere north of 25 miles per charge, and uh, with all wheel drive and being a Rav, I think people are going to like it. All right. I mean, listen, any progress is good, but I, okay. Well, before I ask you the big question, uh, which is going to be what, what's wrong with Toyota, but uh, let's, there was one more news. I think that, that there was something to do with the, with the car that I absolutely love, uh, which is the Toyota Prius Prime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the pre, the, the 2020 Prius Primes uh, mildly improved. Uh, they have the addition of a fifth back seat. That's a big uh, improvement for some people. Uh, many other owners it doesn't really matter, but for the people that need that, uh, the previous generations were four seaters. Uh, now you, the Prius Prime is going to have a fifth back seat, kind of like what Chevy did with the Volt, except this back seat is a little bit more functional. I remember the the fifth seat that was added added to the Volt was kind of like you know it's terribly uncomfortable to sit in. Uh, you know, an adult would have a lot of problems getting back there, but uh, the, the Prime's fifth backseat is, is a little bit more user-friendly, a little bit more usable. I think people will be able to sit back there and, and have enough room. And uh, I think that that's going to make a difference. That and uh, I think they have Apple CarPlay is going to be available in the 2020 uh, Prius Prime, which wasn't available before. That's pretty much the big difference is the fifth backseat. And also it has a uh, that and all of Toyota hybrids, the other news coming out of this evolution event was that Toyota is improving the battery warranty from eight years, 100,000 miles to 10 years, 150,000 miles. That's good for all Toyota hybrids, plug-in hybrids, regular hybrids, um, so that it has a much better uh, battery warranty. Unfortunately, I was able to confirm that warranty isn't for degradation, it's for defect, uh, but 
you don't see too many degradation problems with plug-in hybrids, not nearly as bad as you do with BEVs that use a, a much bigger percentage of the battery and rely on the battery more. So I think that um, it's not that big of a deal that they're not warranting capacity, but uh, owners should know that, that that's for defect. It's, it's you know, not uh, this new longer warranty does not warranty against capacity loss. Now, one thing we should also mention that Lexus, the luxury brand of Toyota, has announced and they put together a teaser, all two seconds of it, uh, that they're going to unveil a, an all-electric car finally for the Lexus brand at the Tokyo Motor Show uh, this month. Uh, you know, is that giving us a little bit of hope, maybe? So, uh, you know, hope, I guess. Uh, we don't have any details about that. We don't even know. Do, do we even know when it's going to be available uh, or they're just unveiling it? This might be, you know, yeah. a 2024 model. Who knows? There wasn't uh, enough time in that two second video to tell us about that. Yeah. The image I'm showing is that pretty much what we caught, which I'm assuming is looking from the back of the car. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I'm not getting excited about that. Listen, Toyota is still focused on hybrids. Uh, it's painfully obvious. Uh, they did announce at the Evolution event that by 2025, every Toyota model, every car sold will be available in an electrified version. But that includes mild hybrids. So, you know, they, 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 they wouldn't be lying if 2025 comes and they still don't even have a fully electric car, you know? So um, it, the, the whole lineup, any, elect, any Toyota you get, even the, the trucks, the pickup trucks, will be available in electrified form. Could be a plug-in hybrid, could be a mild hybrid, could be all electric. We didn't get that breakdown. So, um, you know, the, the big news, uh, the big things to touch on coming out of uh, this new media event was that the Prius Prime has a fifth back seat now in Apple CarPlay. They improved their warranties and they're gonna be introducing a uh, plug-in hybrid RAV4. That's, that, that's pretty much it. Uh, when you sell 80% of the world's hybrids, you don't want to transition to fully electric. And I think that's what's going on here that, you know, they make so much money on their hybrids. They have such a competitive advantage selling hybrids that they know they won't have that competitive advantage with fully electric cars because there's a lot more competition. There's companies out there that are doing it better than what they could do right now. So why rush to do it? Why not just keep selling hybrids? I hear you. And actually, I didn't know that fact. That does make partial sense. But at the same time, you know, why not have one, right? I mean, it won't hurt anything to have one to, if anything, to test out the market, to test out the technology, because I don't care how big of a manufacturer are, you know that even Volkswagen Group and other manufacturers have had trouble with their first electric car because, you know, even though they're big and been around for a while, it's their first go at it. Um, so why not do that? Uh, you know, try to become profitable just on a smaller scale and, and be able to do that. They, they certainly can hire talent or already have talent. They have the money, they have the factories, you know, they have this deal with Panasonic now. Why not do that? Like, I'm, I'm not saying they should go electric tomorrow. I get the whole hybrid sales thing, but why not at least start trying do they not believe the future is electric? And by electric, I mean battery powered, not hydrogen fuel cell powered electric. I think that they know that, Alex. And I think it just comes down to the fact that Toyota does not want to make a car that loses money. It's very simple. Electric cars are not profitable today. It's, it's, it's that simple. And I think that they are much more content making hybrids that make them a ton of money, selling a ton of them and saying, you know what? When we need to, we can flip the light switch and do it. We're Toyota, we're huge. And you know what? Um, they have a tremendous amount of experience, more than any other automaker, working with electrification, let's say. Um, you know, it's not fully electric cars, but they've sold how many million hybrids? And it's, you know, it's, it's giving them a lot of experience working with batteries, working with electric powertrains. It's, it's not totally the same thing, but they've got the engineers and I think that they can, they, they can jump in the game when they need to. Um, I'm not happy that they're not joining in now and, and they're not um, say doing their part to bring pure electric driving to, to the public, but I understand it as a business decision. They, they uh, have a corner of the market with hybrids. 
So they're saying, you know what? We don't want to uh, upset the apple cart until we have to. We're content making these hybrids. I think a lot of EV enthusiasts understand that and say, you know what? Well, I'm just not going to give them my money anymore if that's the plan that they have, if that's the path they're taking, and I'll leave the brand. So I think there's more uh, of a chance that Toyota damages themselves that way than by not putting out an electric car profit-wise because they probably wouldn't make money with it. Yeah. I don't see myself supporting Toyota as a, an electric car enthusiast. I don't care what they make next. I mean, at least it will take me a while to come around, just like with, with Volkswagen Group uh, and, and Dieselgate, and I'll see what kind of job they're going to actually do with electric car. Um, you know, I, 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 I still think that they should just make Mirai uh, even just for California in the battery version as well, because again, I think if they can do one and they'll do well, and I don't think Mirai is profitable right now anyway, uh, but on a smaller scale, I guess they can still afford it. Anyway, listen, uh, my hopes have been struck down again. <laughs> I don't know why I haven't learned my lesson from the last time. You know, hopefully we'll, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. But luckily, we have so many other brands that are willing to take money of people who don't want to give it to Toyota because they don't have an electric car. So I guess everybody wins. Absolutely. You know, you have to uh, vote with your pocketbook, I guess. You know, uh, if um, you're not happy with what Toyota is doing, don't support them. If you're happy with what some of the other companies are doing, buy a car from them. You know, that, that's what's going to help push the needle. Uh, support the companies that you think are doing right with electric vehicles. I've, I've tried to do that, and uh, I know you have. So, you know, I think that's, that's how the companies are going are gonna to get the message. If people just keep buying, you know, millions of hybrids, Toyota, what's their incentive to switch from that? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I know you've called them out publicly on Twitter, which only brings me to, uh, you know, uh, 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 sort of it's about uh, their self-charging hybrids. Right, right. right self -charging. I didn't really get into that at the press event. There's yeah. no need to have <laughs> more fights. Right. Uh, we, we, we still want to get invited next time, too. All right. Why don't you tell people where they can follow so they can see you calling out Toyota and others when they're not exactly uh, <laughs> being truthful or, or, or doing a good job on electric cars? Sure. So I'm a regular staff writer over at Inside EVs. You can read my articles there. And you can also follow me on Twitter at Tomalog. All right. I do. And uh, you probably have noticed if you follow me on Twitter, I retweet uh, uh, Tom's uh, uh, tweets as much as I can. Listen, this was fun talking about this. I hope they get their stuff together. I don't know why I say hope. I, I you know, will we'll, 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 we'll probably make another video another half a year. We'll see how it does. I am looking forward to checking out the uh, the uh, RAV4, uh, the plug-in hybrid at the LA Auto Show. We'll see what Lexus unveils at the Tokyo Auto Show, which was even be which is going to be before that. Only a, a week or two to wait. So, um, yeah, thanks for joining me once again, and um, I will see you next week. All right, as always, thanks for having me. Talk to you guys next week. All right, guys, always awesome to have Tom on the show. And, you know, this is the benefit that we get uh, having Eli and Tom and, uh, you know, on the show because I don't always get invited everywhere or can go everywhere. And Tom was lucky enough to go to this event and uh, be able to actually bring all of this to us, you know, firsthand. A lot of times we end up taking pictures and 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 being able to show it to you guys when there's no even press pictures available. So um, that is always good to have him. Just like I said, the links to follow him and definitely please do it on, on a Twitter if anything thing are in the description of this video um what else is in the description of this video well the link to our vap list where you basically get a bonus story for free every saturday just a story that we weren't able to cover during our week or on our website so go to e4electric.com slash vip to sign up for that all right looking forward to your uh, comments but maybe even answers to the question what's wrong with toyota maybe you have your own version looking forward to that other than that see you next time and remember to stay charged.